We've got new digs for the chicks. I've used two fences and created an area that's about four times bigger than they were in. The way I did this is I used a large portion of our metal pasture fence and put this fence on the outside of it. So now not only do we have this section out here that the chickens were in, they're on the section beside it where our compost pile is. And what they're gonna do here is kill the grass, eat grass, turn this compost pile, spread it out, and convert this area into garden for next year. The goats and the cow have really kept this pasture eaten down. And this is not ideal because if you look way out there, there's actually weeds they don't like that are growing up. And this is completely the opposite of rotational grazing. With rotational grazing, you put pressure on the animals and they have to graze everything in a section. And it actually stimulates the grass to grow. It keeps it in a highly productive stage of growth. Joel Salton um, calls it grandparent grass, um, diaper grass and teenage grass and he says you want to keep your grass in the teenage stage where it's constantly actively growing. Because we want to give this pasture a little break, let it grow up and then start rotating the cow through it once there's actually enough to eat out there, we're going to move the animals to our back pasture um, for a little while. But that's a pretty big job fencing it. So the interim plan is to actually move the goats into this big area with the chickens and let the goats come in here and eat a lot of this scrubby brush. And while we're letting the goats in here today, I think I'm gonna let Dolly in here today. There's a lot of nice green forage that she'll enjoy. Here we go. Not you, Dolly. She can come in. You're a little acrobat down there. I've given our broody duck a little extra protection here so the goats don't get in her space too much. He's thinking about testing that fence. <coughs> you gonna try another squatter sometime. That's an electric fence, Shep. I don't like seeing a dog get shocked, but I will say it's far less cruel for a dog to learn on an electric fence rather than get tangled in a non-electrified net fence. We've had Oreo, had to, had to cut Oreo out of fences before. So if they're hot, the dog hits it and doesn't like it, but it won't, uh, it's less likely it'll get tangled up. Raven is gobbling poison ivy. And so is Moonbeam. Moving animals is really fun. When you move them into a new environment like this, they have new food. You can just see the excitement in them as they jump in and just aggressively eat. I have to think that this is better for their minds as well as their health, um, for them to have a change of environment, for them to have a different food. The chickens and Donald are not quite sure what to think. Some of them are under the coop. The broody hens are still in their boxes. And then some of them have actually gone out into this wood section, the back section of this fence comes through the woods here. So all of this woods down here is fenced. Just through one simple fence move, we're taking these animals with their strong inherent instincts and abilities. We're using their natural instincts actually to do things that we want done. We're clearing brush, we're preparing a garden area, also, by moving the fences, we're reducing the parasite load on the goats and on the cow, giving this, this untouched area out here to eat from. We're giving them variety in their diet, variety for their mental state. We're giving our pasture a break. We're just doing a lot in one move. Take an animal like a chicken and put it anywhere, and it's just going to do what chickens do. It's going to root. It's going to find food, it's going to kill small plants, it's going to dig up the surface of the soil. 
it's almost like good animal management is actually unmanagement. It's actually providing the environment where the animal can do the thing that it does best. I think good animal management is actually just <laughs> mitigating the consequences of confinement um, because you know you have to take care of problems like parasites because the animals you're keeping them in one area they're not completely ranging and you have to mitigate the problem of concentrated animal manure you might have to clean out your stalls or clean out your area move them to another pasture use deep bedding these goats work as a team they're like all right we'll do this together they all eat one tree at the same time. <laughs> Come on. What are you doing? Breaking it up to the baby goats when it. It's fun leaving them all in here. It's like this is some sort of animal paradise. I mean, I think it is. <laughs>